<laughs> ah, January. <laughs> this, this is one thing I'll disagree with you on. This doesn't feel like a January movie. No, it, this, it doesn't. This feels like a September movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, that like late August, more September feeling. Now, the Bye Bye Man, that was totally the, a January movie. Was that a movie. January movie? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry I missed that, but, you know, that was a <laughs> you and Brian movie. <laughs> it was, and that entire dipshit audience. Um, so anyway, I, if you've really, really missed the lack of, of, uh, triple X action movies, um, and I don't mean porn, um, well, good news, there's triple X, the return of Xander Cage playing in theaters right now. Yeah, it's playing in theaters and that's it. I'm try I was watching this movie like one. I, I was, was like, hoping for like a ridiculous like Fast and the Furious stupidity kind of fun action movie. Oh, it is a celebration of stupidity. Th this yeah, movie, but not this, the right kind of stupidity. This movie is parody. Oh, yeah. This movie is absolute parody. Like I will say this, this movie versus the first one, even the second one honestly, this movie has no pretensions to it that it's trying to be the next James Bond, which the first no. one did. Uh, the first one came out like, oh, this is going to be the franchise that takes James Bond's place and whatever fucking stupid bullshit. But the movie was as extreme as fucking stale-ass Doritos, and so is this one. This yeah. movie has more of a feeling of self-parody to it. It, it, it. it definitely does. It is just... Uh, it was... Fucking awful. It's a movie about dropping satellites on people. Yeah. And Xander, Xander Cage feels like the natural progression of Ford Fairlane. <laughs> it's if <laughs> Fuck, I want another Ford Fairlane movie so I'll bad. Take, I'll take I'm, that over I, this. Like, honestly, imagine... Like, honestly, I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Because I have a soft spot in my heart for the adventures of Ford uh -huh. Fairlane. I really do. Mm-hmm. It was my uh, my first roommate in college's favorite movie, uh -huh. so we watched it a lot. Like, I have a fondness in my heart for that movie, and I think a sequel to that, starring Andrew Dice Clay now, uh -huh. looking as he looks now, yeah, and just being that same character but failing, the would be an amazing <laughs> sequel. I will take that over Triple X, The yeah. Return of Xander Cage. There's more memorable things about The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. It's a funnier movie. It has better villains. It's a better made film. Oh, <laughs> this movie. It's just the first... It took 40 minutes for me to understand the plot of a stupid action movie. And the plot is just like the Pandora's box has gone missing and we need to get it back. Right. They need to bring back Triple X because Samuel Jackson dies in the opening scene. Even though you know he doesn't because there's been... There's scenes of him in the trailer that haven't happened yet. Yeah. And the scene of him in the trailer that hasn't happened yet is the end of the movie. <laughs> and... Okay, so there's a rival team of Triple X team members that have their own motivations that their motivations are never resolved in this. Uh huh. Like, Donnie Yen's character, like, he's portrayed as kind of this other villain character. And then just at some point, he's a hero too. Because, well, here's the thing because they both realize they're after the same thing, yet they keep fighting against each other to yeah. the point to where they're trying to kill each other still and causing just carnage and car accidents all over the goddamn place when they should, when there's no reason they shouldn't be working together. When Ice Cube was in the second one, I think they were attempting to try something where it would be a different Triple X every movie, yeah. but no one gave a shit about Triple X State of the Union, so that didn't happen. So what we're seeing here is kind of like, well, I guess... It, is this like if the movies continued, only they never made those movies, yeah. and apparently there's one where Donnie Yen is the lead character? I'd rather see that movie. Yeah, there's like 20 fucking characters in this movie. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I didn't even know his name till the end credits. I uh, I wasn't at really trying to know no, his I name No, I wasn't either, this. but... The movie is... I, look, I, I, when I was watching the movie, I... Uh, Things that I thought were slightly more charm, not 
charming, that's the wrong word, uh, more impressive about the first one, because the first one did have really good stunt work in it. It's a movie about an extreme sports guy who becomes a secret agent, so yeah. it did have some good stunt work in it. This movie... While, yeah, there is stunt work that's certainly going into it, it's shot so quick and fast that it might as well be nothing. Oh, it, yeah. It might as well be... like I'm, It's like, I'm trying to get into this fight choreography you got going on here, but fuck all if I can see it. Fuck all if I can see... That I can really be impressed by any of the stunts you're doing. One, because a lot of them are just special effects and green screen. And also the the parts that are actual stunt work going on, it's just so fast and choppy and quick that I'm like, I'm not impressed by any of no, this. No, no, the, the only things I found impressive physically in this movie was every time Donnie Yen was in a fight scene. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's Donnie Yen. Yeah. And you know what? He was in a better movie last month. Yeah. <laughs> so, fuck this movie. What if he was playing his same character in this? It is about a team. The team's up to go get something. <laughs> this stu it's The movie's already a parody. I mean, it is. This is a movie... The dialogue is straight out of, like, the Godfrey Ho segments that he splices into, like, movies he just yeah. found on the sidewalk. I mean, it, it it might as well have lines like, the dragon's fire burns hot, or, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, this movie has a scene where Vin Diesel fucks, like, 20 women, and then <laughs> and then says, the things I do for my country. Uh, Goddamn, like... And, I was I was wondering what the difference is between something like this and the Fast and the Furious movies, because I do enjoy those movies and what i came down to in my head was just because i like a whopper doesn't mean i like everything on the burger king menu no and that's that's really kind of the thing it's honestly i've always felt that vin diesel is uh one of the least charismatic leading men in hollywood for a I long time i wouldn't go time. that far no honestly i i he's I don't care for him and even in the movies that i like that he's in uh-huh i don't like him uh, there. I think he's more versatile than he gives himself credit for. Because when you look at him in in movies like Strays or Saving Private Ryan or uh, Find Me Guilty, he does have more range than he's usually usually saddled with in movies. And when Vin Diesel is used right in movies, I like him a lot. Like uh, I'm, 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 what was it, Pitch Black? I like uh, yeah, Pitch I like, Black's good movie. Yeah. He's really good, and I, I really enjoy him when he's playing Riddick. I like it. I can get a lot of enjoyment out of Vin Diesel and stuff like the Fast and the Furious movies, or even like The Last Witch Hunter, because sometimes he just has... There's something in his eye that says he also knows that this is stupid. Uh, that, that he's also kind of in on the joke about how stupid some of this stuff is. The problem with something like Xander Cage versus something like... Fast and the Furious, because I agree with you, he, he doesn't have much of charisma in this movie, but that is also largely due to the fact that this is a billion times much more of a douchebaggery film. Oh no, yeah, the, the, like, the, the, some of the characters in the Fast and the Furious movies, they're not people I'd want to hang out with, but they're a lot more fun and interesting to watch than all of these douchebags in this no, movie. No, and, I th and I, I, I'm sure that's it, because when you break it down to the plot and the action sequences in this movie, they aren't any more dumber than any of the stuff in the Fast and the Furious movies, but the Fast and the Furious movies... It's a joyful kind of stupid in the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, it, it is. And even in this, they're having... Most of them are having fun in this movie, but the Fast and the Furious movies are a collection of characters, and, and you don't have to like all the characters in those movies, but there's so many of them that you're going to find some that you like. There there are funny characters in those fil in those films, and they can be funny together and have fairly good chemistry. Uh, the assholes in this movie, boy, do I not give a fuck if any of them make it out towards yeah. the end. Whereas in the Fast and the Furious movies, they got kind of sad because you knew at some point Hun was going to die, yeah. you know? I wouldn't have given a fuck if I knew any of the people in this movie were going to die, and that includes Xander Cage. No, I... I would have been fine if he died. This is a movie where, yeah, it 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 is such a toxic level of douchebaggery. Like, if you're 
I understand the appeal of the movie in the sense that it's 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 dumb fun popcorn there's plenty of those that, that i like and you know the movie really doesn't stop in terms of the action but i'm sitting there like god if someone's watching this and they identify with xander cage in any way that person's an asshole no he's a <laughs> prick and they just this is the movie this is the kind of movie too where this is the kind of movie that makes me dislike fucking Vin Diesel because it's just like uh -huh. the fucking ego on you you piece of shit uh -huh. there, there was you're right there was something way more vain about this no, film. absolutely because it's it's like listen man you're fucking almost 50 years old and you look good for 50 yeah. but you were not God's gift to women uh -huh. <laughs> like in any way whatsoever mm-hmm you're not that fucking tough either, dude. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> well, you're like four and a half feet tall. <laughs> so, so is Bruce Lee, and he can kick my ass today. Yeah. <laughs> but this movie is made up of so many scenes of people telling him how great he is. And how much... Uh, yeah, and, and how he's a legend. Yeah, how he is a le Triple X is a legend. Uh, like, motherfucker, your name is Triple X and your movie's PG-13. Yeah. How fucking hardcore are you, ass? I mean, it has a movie where he just goes up to people and is, it, and just says shit like, well, you know I know mouth to mouth, right? <laughs> like, this guy is just gross. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> like, every woman he hits on in this movie is, like, 22. And you know what? A lot and of movies... obviously so, to the point where it's like, you know, you'd probably still be playing a high schooler in most movies. Well, and you know what? A lot of movies can get away with that. Like, the, the James Bond movies oh, have been getting away for that for 50 years. But, like, But James Bond's a different kind of smarmy. No, true. Gross. That's that's the thing. Yeah. Like, when even, even, like, look, I'm complaining about this movie right now, but I'll easily go home and put on, like, A View to a Kill. Yeah. One of the worst James Bond movies, but I'll fucking put it on with 60-year-old Roger Moore hitting on Tanya Roberts. And you know what, like, is, like, kind of off-putting as that slightly is to an extent? It's way less gross than Vin Diesel talking about CPR and shit in this fucking movie. No, it's... <laughs> with his giant fur coat looking like fucking street racing Dolomite. <laughs> like really motherfucker like there's a reason this kind of fucking late 90s early 2000s action movie just died yeah and who was nostalgic for this for shit for triple x i <laughs> I mean, I guess in the sense, like, because the Fast and the Furious movies do so well that it'll get that audience to come in and, and think, like, oh, this will be more Dominic but Toretto. It, it was so telling what, how well this movie's going to do when we walked into this theater and, you know, there's 12 fucking theaters in this place. It was showing in the smallest fucking theater. Well, that that could be anything. Like, I've I've been to... That that could be just fucking theater space and shit like that. I, I've been to movies before that had a pretty good opening weekend that were in one of the smaller theaters, but I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Like, there were some people in there. I, it wasn't a packed house. There were more people at the Bye Bye Man. I, all of this audience was way better than the fucking audience for the Bye Bye Man. Brian told me a little bit about that. Yeah. The... Yo, you would have loved that shit. God damn, I was praying that you were there at the <laughs> Bye Bye Man. Fuck. If you thought those girls behind us at God's Not Dead were trouble. Oh, oh, yeah. Tell me about Bye Bye Man. I was just like, I wish I had been there. I, wish I would have just, like, I wouldn't have just turned around and said something. I would have marched to the front of the theater. Yeah. I. I like how you didn't even know you were seeing this movie until a couple hours no. ago. Well, Sarah was supposed to go, and she's not feeling well, and it's like, all right, fuck it, I'll go. Like, it I've was been home with the the baby's been angry all week, so it's like, fuck it, okay, I could stand to get out of the house for an hour and a half. Wish I'd stayed home and let the baby scream at me. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least in that movie, I love the character. You go home. <laughs> You hug the baby to sleep, you kiss your wife, and try to look dope while you do it. <laughs> and, and the sad thing is, 
Like, uh, nah, I, I don't look dope anymore. <laughs> I'm 33 years old. I am massively overweight. I know this. <laughs> like, my prime days are way gone. Oh, no, man. You gotta, you see, look, man, you gotta be put in a movie like this. That way they will give you the line, I put the dough in dope. <laughs> As I'm making a pizza or something. <laughs> this movie's got a line where, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this movie's got a line where Ice Cube, oh, yeah, Ice Cube says, rock, paper, scissors, grenade launcher. And you know, when Ice Cube popped up in this movie, it was uh, kind of like an, oh, thank God moment. It was. You're so right, because Triple X State of the Union was a far worse movie than the first one was. But when I was watching this, I was like, you know, I would kind of rather have the return of Ice Cube, honestly, <laughs> than the return of Xander Cage. <laughs> Damn the lines in this fucking movie. Like, oh. uh, Tony Collette, like honestly, who seemed to be having a great time in this film. Honestly, <laughs> she to me she seemed bored as fuck. Oh, I didn't think so. She seemed so fucking bored. She was doing a thing. No, she was playing like stereotypical like action movie villain. Like a uh, uh, when she has lines in there like we want the best, so we've got to send out for the best. So you tell me, are you a are you a patriot or are you a tyrant? Nah, I'm triple X. Like she, she has a constant frown and look of anger towards this, where they just simply asked her to play the most stereotypical dumb shit action movie villain, and it to me it looked like she was having fun. To me, an actress like Tony Collette would not be in a mo movie like this unless they were probably having a good time. We're getting paid really well. See, because I I thought she seemed uninterested and dispassionate about the entire thing. It didn't seem that way to me. Like, I... She, the, her character was so stereotypically B-movie evil. And obviously so. Like, to the meaning... Meaning, like, it was obvious she was gonna turn out to be the villain. Oh, yeah. Um... Well, that's the thing. She wasn't really the villain. It was just, at the end, she was given orders and she was gonna follow those orders like a fucking, you know... Mm -hmm. CIA operative in these movies acts and it's it's like that's fine whatever yes that makes her a bad person fine mm -hmm. she's just a bad guy in the movie but that whole like third act in that plane I'm sitting there going you know she's the bad guy but the rest of these guys these are US Army mm -hmm. and he's just killing them <laughs> <laughs> as the plane goes into zero yeah. gravity goes into zero gravity is doing fucking 360s all over the fucking place man here's what i mean i mean like they they do know how stupid this movie is but that at the end of the day that that doesn't automatically it doesn't mean save it, it. no that, that doesn't automatically save your movie i mean this has a scene a sequence where the motherfucker is skiing off of a fucking uh tower you know, he, he doesn't even ski off of it he jumps off of it mm mhm Drops at least nine stories, lands on his feet, and keeps going. It's like, no, legs <laughs> broken. Just lands, keeps going, turns, then it becomes he's skateboarding and does like a bounce off of a bus, high fives a guy in a car. Meanwhile, it turns out he was just doing this so they would all get the World Cup. Uh, so th all the televisions in this little area, this third world area he's in, could all be watching the World Cup. And a little kid looks at him and says, thank you for bringing us the world, Xander. And that was towards the beginning of the movie. And at that, that was the, like the second scene. It's the second scene in the movie. And at that point, I kind of laughed and was like, all right, th this is setting the tone for the movie. It's, it, it's going to be well aware that it's over the top and that it's dumb and, and the lines are just going to be stock action exploitation lines. And that was kind of funny for a while, but after a half hour, this shit gets old. Yeah. There's not enough interesting characters or definitely not enough charisma to carry this. No. And, and you need that to carry a dumb act, no matter how dumb your action movie is. You need some kind of charisma on the part of your heroes. And this, they're just going around acting like douchebags. Like, this is why that this fad of early 2000s shit just... Not that it went away, but goddamn, who gives a shit anymore? 
No, and that's, like, I, it, it's this weird, like, era of nostalgia where, like, the shit that we were in, you know, high school or later yeah. is coming back, and it's like, but but why? Mm -hmm. It really, like, wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, Triple X wasn't that great back in 2002 no. whenever it came out, and we were... We were age appropriate for that. We were 21 or 21, 22 when the first movie came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even back then, it was like, I, I'll just stick to the, I'll just stick to shit from the 90s and 80s in terms of dumb action movies that I like. At least then I'll get to see Arnold Schwarzenegger throw a saw through a guy's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, if you like, if, I can't say that if you're a big fan of the Fast and the Furious movies that you'll like this. No, because I, I, I like those movies too. Yeah, same here. Like I can turn off, like the part of my brain that wants to like, mm -hmm. like intellectualize things and watch those movies and enjoy them for what they are. Uh -huh. This I couldn't do. I tried. Uh -huh. Like I sat down, going, "Okay, man, just shut it off. We're gonna watch this," mm -hmm. and it's just like a minute in. It's like no. This is too fucking dumb. This is too <laughs> what are you dumb. talking about, man? The opening credit sequence was inside of a satellite that then gets dropped onto a dude. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? I, 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 the, um, the movie, a movie can't just be dumb. No, it can't. It, it can't just be. You can have over a the dumb top movie, and stupid, and of you course. can have it be over the top and stupid. Well, yeah, but it can't. But it's got to have some charm. It's got to have some. Mm -hmm. It's got it, it, some style to it because yeah. that's another thing this movie had was absolutely zero fucking style. No, th this movie just, ugh, God, if this movie was in smell o vision, it would need the best kind of, the most strongest kind of deodorant. And, like, and this everything would smell like Dracar Noir yeah. and fucking Mountain Dew burps. Why uh, the fuck would you want to That's smell what smell I mean. Vision. This movie just seems like it's smelly. You know? <laughs> like, it just does. Like, it like just... everybody on screen, it's like, you don't smell good. Yeah, you? right? But yet their characters are supposed to be God's gift to women, but they smell like the fuck, they probably smell like the fucking onion shits <laughs> I can't do this movie man like I, if, if, if you really love the, if you're nostalgic for the first one which I'm sorry if you're nostalgic for the first one even the second one I guess you know what you're like fuck here's here's more of it for you um but other than that I mean this is fuck off uh you know i don't know if you got a group of friends around and like uh i don't know it's on netflix or something <laughs> like that and you want to laugh at it for like 30 minutes sure i don't even think because me it's it's typically me and sarah at the vin diesel movies because we yeah. get more often than not we get a kick out of them i don't know what she would have thought of this she wouldn't have liked this <laughs> no, she wouldn't have liked this she it, she would have felt the same way we do about I yeah uh, I can't I, I agree because I can't imagine this would be one where she's the odd one out no. and that she liked this. No, she, <laughs> she wouldn't like this. There's nothing to like about this. There's no. honestly nothing to like about this. the only character at all that I thought was at at any point amusing was the guy who played the hound on Game of Thrones. Well that's who that is. Yeah. 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 Uh, but they didn't give him jack shit no, to do because yeah. there's 18 billion other fucking characters. Exactly. Uh, I, I, yeah, I thought that dude looked fucking familiar. Well, I gotta go see... Uh, speaking of 18 different characters, I gotta go see Split here in a second. Ah! <laughs> fuck, I actually want to see that. All right. I know, I'm really excited. I'm, <laughs> I'm down for... Excuse me. I'm down for, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Split. And like Silence wasn't on the list of stuff to come out this weekend. But they put up weekend. the fucking poster. The poster is on like the now showing thing on there. And at first I was like, oh, motherfuckers, if you, if you secretly didn't tell us that Sil that a Martin Scorsese movie was playing while we were sitting there watching fucking Return of Xander Cage. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anyway. Any final thoughts on this shit? Fuck this shit. <laughs> right. See ya.